welcome you again in the classes of evs academy in the last class we were discussing about the public liability insurance act under which two things are very important that i have told you one is the paid up capital that is the total net worth of the company and if it is more than 50 crores then the maximum amount of insurance that company can do is only about 50 crores for that he has to pay some premium to the insurance company and the insurance company will provide the security of the compensation for that company in the case of any mishappen in the case of any accident other than the workers this is important and how much the insurance would be provided that must be under the 50 crore value and the claims claims should be forwarded to the district magistrate or the district collector dm and the collector will decide that whether that particular claim is genuine or not whether the amount should be paid or not within the three months of getting the application in the dm office or district collector office and here the application should be in the total time period of happening of the accident from that date of up to the five years if the application is five year more than five year old then that application would be straight forward rejected so that is what the public liability insurance act of 1991 we have discussed so this will protect the industry or the factory and the owner of the industry and factory so there would be no loss to them and that all the expenses are covered by the public liability insurance act so i hope this is clear to you and today we have to start the new rule or new regulation that is the coastal zone regulation notification of 2011 If you look at this particular law or this particular notification, this come in existence in the year of 1991. Then after that, in the year 2011, there was a major amendment in this particular notification, and now this notification is known as the Coastal Zone Regulation Notification of 2011. And another small amendment was done in the year of 2018 as well. If you look at this particular law, so which range would be under this particular notification? Suppose this is your sea line. so there would be high tide and low tide situation on the sea line or sea shore area so in the high tide situation this water level can go up to certain level so that would be called as the high tide line and during the low tide time this water level would be again go down and this is suppose your low tide line so this is your high tide line and this is your low tide line so this notification says that in the brackish water zone in the rivers in the bays in the oceans all that area the tide up to the 500 meter from the high tide line so that zone that is influenced by 500 meter so this is suppose 500 meter area from the high tide low zone high tide line zone then there would be zone between the high tide line and low tide line this all zone this all zone is covered under the coastal zone regulation notification of 2011 so this get influenced by the tides up to 500 meter from the high tide line and the land between the low tide line and the high tide line have been declared as coastal regulation zone crz in the year of 1991 the coastal regulation zones have been declared by the ministry of environment forest and climate change under the environmental protection act of 1986 so this zone is or this rule is regulation is also under the epa 1986 while the crz rules are made by the union government ministry it means by the central government implementation is to be ensured by the state governments through their coastal zone management authorities so every state government have their authority which is called as the state government coastal zone management authority so that authority will take care of that all laws rules and regulation and their follow up things high tide line what is the high tide line high tide line means the line on the land up to which the highest water line reaches during the spring tide not in the neap tide so you can remember from the energy chapter we have already discussed the neap tide neap tide is the weak tide spring tide spring tide is the strong tide that happens during the 180 degree angle between the sun moon and earth so that spring tide high tide zone high tide line is known as the htl high tide line of the ocean or that particular water zone what is the low tide line so similarity it means the line on the land up to which the lowest water line reaches during the spring tide because the extent of the tide is highest during the spring tide time so the low tide line would be lowest in the time of the spring tide and the high tide line would be highest during the spring tide line and this 
मेजरमेंट इज डन ओनली ड्यूरिंग दिस स्प्रिंग टाइड सिचुएशन और दी स्ट्रॉन्ग टाइड सिचुएशन सो आई होप दिस कोस्टल जोन रेगुलेशन नोटिफिकेशन इज क्लियर टिल नाउ वॉट एल्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लॉ और नोटिफिकेशन लेट सी दैट The next thing is in India, the Coastal Regulation Zone (CRZ) rules govern human and industrial activity close to the coastline in order to protect the fragile ecosystem near the sea. Because that near the sea area is very very important for the endangered species as well as all the species which is living in the both side, in the land side as well as in the ocean side. So the, you can see that turtles, turtles come to this sea side. and they give their eggs there and then the hatching and all the things would be done there only on that particular zone high tide line low tide line or that nearby zone of the sea so that's why the crz notification is very very important they restrict certain kinds of activities like large constructions setting up of new industries storage or disposal of the hazardous material mining reclamation and bonding of the ocean within a certain distance from the coastline so that the species which are endangered or which are uh, hampered by this particular building up or the establishment of these large industries can be protected easily now under this crz notification of 2011 all the coastal zones are divided in different categories like we have seen in the forest policy three types of forest we have seen there similarly in the crz rule also we have different types of coastal rule regulation zone and these zones are divided here in multiple categories the first category here you can see is this crz1 zone ecologically sensitive areas like mangroves coral reefs biosphere reserves all are under this crz1 rule so this is the most protected type of coastal regulation zone area crz1 so no new construction shall be permitted in this crz1 the coastal regulation zone of one except only few things what are the few things project relating to the department of atomic energy because the atomic energy department requires the huge amount of water so that can be taken from the sea line so that's why these projects are allowed and also they will reduce the uh, fossil fuel emission in the environment because they will produce cleaner form of energy there as compared to the fossil fuel so those projects are allowed here then construction of the trans harbor sea link and roads without affecting the tidal flow of water between the low tide line high tide line these things are only allowed in the crz1 no other companies other factories other mining projects or maybe any other construction project can be done in the crz1 rule except these two so that's what crz1 zone is which is very very ecologically sensitive and having a very few very important things like mangroves coral reefs and the biosphere reserves etc so i hope this crz1 zone is clear to you then between the low tide line and high tide line in areas which are not ecologically sensitive following may be permitted what is the meaning of may be permitted so you have to take the permission through eia process but these may be uh, permitted so if your construction projected under these things so you can apply for the uh, environmental clearance so maybe you will get if there would be no significant impact on the nearby environment so here the first thing is uh, that can be allowed or permitted here is the exploration and extraction of the natural gas because natural gas is a type of thing which is very very rare in the indian subcontinent as well as very very useful so that natural gas can be used for the burning process for the uh, cooking purposes in the nearby houses that can be used to run uh, the maybe electricity production may be supplied to any nearby plant or nearby factory so natural gas is very very rare element you can say as well as very important in the view of the fossil fuel in the view of the fossil fuel because natural gas have lowest emission rate in all the fossil fuels The diesel, petrol, the all things would be have the coal also have very high emission rate. But the natural gas is kind of purest form of the fossil fuel, which can be harnessed easily, and there would be very little effect in the environment. So that is allowed. Construction of the basic amenities like schools, roads for the nearby areas for traditional inhabitants living within the biosphere reserve. So that is allowed. 
they can got permitted they may be got permission but the situation should be there should be no harm to the nearby environment as well as suppose there is no other area is available only that area is available for the construction only then they can get permission salt harvesting by the solar evaporation of the sea water so this by this method the salt is extracted and the salt is then uh, used for the food purpose or for the cooking purpose so that is allowed desalination plants desalination plants will just use or remove the salt of that particular water and the clean water would be provided by the desalination plants these plants can be also got permission in the establishment of this zone and storage of the non hazardous cargo such as edible oil fertilizers within the notified ports so suppose if there is any port area nearby so on that area some storage facilities are also allowed so these are the uh, things which can get permission that may they may get permission from the government central government state government to establish them in that particular eco sensitive area other all the things are strictly not allowed in these areas so i hope these exceptions you can remember now so from this the question can be easily formed so remember it carefully then we have the crz second area crz2 areas which are developed up to the shore line and falling within the municipal limits includes the build up area villages and towns are that are already well established so there is no talking about the new establishment of cities or towns so already existed cities and towns are under this crz2 rule buildings are permissible on the landward side of the hazardous line so we have two types of site one is the leeward site another one is the landward side so what is the difference between leeward side and landward side so the leeward side is that area through that air is going you can say and the leeward side is that area from that air is coming actually the name was leeward and the windward so leeward we say that area to that area where wind is going windward is that side from wind is coming similarly we have the landward side so here the landward side is which is near to the land zone or to the continent side not in the ocean side so not in the hazardous line side so buildings may be got permission in the crz2 zone other activities such as desalination plants are also permission in the crz2 areas and some construction is permitted only as per guidelines specified by the notification that a detail you can read as well pdfs is available so i haven't found anything very important there so i haven't included that but two two things you can remember they can get permission or got uh, permissible in the establishment process in the crz2 areas so which is less sensitive as compared to the crz1 area then we have the crz3 area crz3 area would be less sensitive than the lesser sensitive than the crz2 area also so this is the areas that are relatively undisturbed and do not fall under either in category or category 2 and also include the rural and urban areas that are not substantially developed yet so all that would be under this crz3 zone so between 0 to 200 meters from the high tide line is a no development zone where no construction shall be permitted at any cost so this area is not allowed to do any kind of permission here in the construction process and only after 200 meter from the high tide line you can develop something if you get permission from the government so that is what crz3 area is so i hope all the three coastal zone regulation areas are clear to you